Tu pa ylös sen. Welcome back to Taival Outdoors. <laughs> My name is Joel, that's my dog, Rokka, the Alaskan Malamut, who turned two three days ago. We are here at the edges of Hammastunturi wilderness area, up north in Finnish Lapland. Great looking morning, minus one degrees. I'm only going to be here a couple of days. Which some might think is insane to come all the way up here for such a short amount of time. But I had the opportunity and I think already the first morning showed that it was a good call. Unlike usually, I don't have a long hike planned. In fact, this is my first time in this particular wilderness area. And I haven't watched any videos or photos of things are over here because I want to experience this place by myself for the first time make my own opinions I have only one place on my mind that I would like to visit now during this couple of days um, but if I can't make it then that's fine this is more for just relaxing, just hanging out in the wilderness. As you can probably tell by our leisurely pace. This looks like as good a place as any to have some lunch. Water is close by. No chair though this time. But other than that, not bad. There's a slight breeze, but it's heading that way. And I think we also found somewhat decent trail over there. Not a lot of e even game trails or anything. Over here, the paths sort of vanish into thin air and pop up somewhere else, but I think we found a good one that goes somewhat to the direction that I was thinking about, but we'll have to check the map then. But first, some lunch. So today is Tuesday and I've been going and being outdoors since Friday afternoon. Did a trip with a friend first to Koli National Park. We did the Herajärvi Loop Trail. Absolutely brutal, 60 kilometers. The trail goes on top of every single hill there is in and around the National Park. And uh, it was quite tough going. Very slippery trails, full of rocks, full of roots, falling leaves. Doing that and then coming here, uh, it's quite a change in, in scenery and, and also the challenges are completely different. But if you're interested in knowing what I've been eating on this double trip, then check out my latest live stream. I go through all the, all the things that I packed in terms of food and 
sort of snacks and any other accessories. Mm. While I was waiting for the meal to get ready, I did a quick stroll around this campfire site. Found a metal peg, some type of maybe medical tape or something, and a bit of plastic and a tiny bit of tin foil as well from the fire. So there's always always something left by someone. I can understand the metal peg. Sometimes you just lose those or forget those. But the trash, that's something that... Mm -mm. Don't do that. Too bad I don't have my big tarp with me. This would have been a cool spot to stay for some night. This is a snowmobile trail. Pretty much the closest thing to marked trails in this wilderness areas. And when a trail like this happens to go to the direction where I'm headed, I don't mind taking advantage of it. Because oftentimes there's also a pretty decent footpath following the same route. Easy. Almost. Almost. A shortcut. There's the shelter all set up. I don't know if I mentioned, but the last couple of days that we were in Koli National Park, it was raining almost all of the time. And when it wasn't, the air humidity was so much that, or so high, that it might as well be raining. So I managed to dry everything else in the car, except of course this tent. This tent has been tearing itself apart <laughs> and only lasted for one and a half years. Right now, I believe it's snowing. Welcome to Lapland, I guess. Maybe this is the reason no one else is here at this time of the year. It's wet. Days are short, so it's dark. There isn't proper snow on the ground yet. It's windy. But at least I haven't seen anyone else yet, so that's a bonus. But look at this campfire site. Amazing. Really cool. We have a massive fire pit here as well. It is quite windy, but I was still thinking that lighting up a fire there would be nice. The obvious downside with a place like this is that all the firewood or suitable material has been of course already burned so I need to go fetch some from uphill from somewhere there and plenty of places to put up tents here over there over there big area but I wanted to put mine here because the ground is a bit softer here so it's nicer to sleep on since it's only three o'clock, I was thinking that I could do today some fishing as well. Any fishermen or women out there watching my channel? How's fishing when it's snowing and windy? 
I don't think I've done fishing with that combination unless it has been ice fishing. So maybe it's for nothing, but oftentimes fishing is, right? Do you see that Mount Doom over there? It might not look like much on camera, but that is the Hammastunturi itself, the place that gave its name to this whole wilderness area. And it is also the only thing that I have on my list for this trip. I was thinking about summiting it with the dog tomorrow, but wind is coming from that direction full cloud coverage as far as I can see over this lake and it's snowing a bit so we'll have to see tomorrow but <laughs> could be that summiting Hamastunture is then something that I will leave for the next time Hopefully there is enough light for the GoPro here. Well, my late October snowfall fishing didn't didn't bring up any any additional meal for us, but as you just saw, the snowfall is getting a bit heavier. In fact, I cannot see Hamastunturi anymore. It's completely covered right now. So I decided to take the dog, retreat back to the tent, make some dinner, maybe a hot chocolate or something. Yeah, if the weather stays like this, tomorrow I am I'm not going to Hamastunduri. But I think we are still going to move tomorrow anyway. Do a bit of bit of walking, not much. I think we did like 15 kilometers or something today, so not a ton. I think I should start doing these trips to the north again <laughs> during early June or something and not always in late September or October but it is what it is there's only one person to blame <laughs> oh, yeah. It's right around zero degrees, maybe plus one. That kind of weather, that kind of wet snow goes right to your core. It's very dangerous actually. It looks like my potato mash something something turned into a soup, but <laughs> it will make do. What I'm trying to say is that this little trip will be a lot more weather dependent than I suspected. But tomorrow is a new day and I'm eager to see what it brings in terms of weather and everything else. I think the dog is pretty tired because he's not interested in my dinner. Cheers. The snowstorm is over. Look at that. It's no longer Mount Doom. It's Karadras. Well, it has been quite a first day here in the wilderness. And my fifth day overall on this trip that started in Goli National Park and is now continuing here. 
I just stepped outside and it is still full cloud coverage, but it is also still windy. And that, of course, might be a good thing. Maybe the winds will clear out the skies by the morning. Who knows? Who knows? But tomorrow is a new day. Ready to conquer Hammastuntori Wilderness then tomorrow. Good morning, folks. Minus four inside the tent. No idea what it is outside there. Rakka is already out there. He has had his breakfast first. Now still keeping my legs and feet inside the sleeping bags and making some morning porridge and coffee. And then it's time to pack up the camp and move on. Because someone is going to ask about this anyway, yes, I did sleep with a bivy bag. It was closed halfway, but as the food box is semi open, there is no condensation. The sleeping bag is completely dry, even though I had my hydration bladder hose as well as my socks from yesterday inside the sleeping bag as well. But as long as it's not completely closed, I have no issues with condensation. Of course, there's plenty of condensation and moisture inside the tent. And as it's minus something outside here, the tent is um, semi-frozen, as are my boots. So might be a bit difficult again to pack down, but... Oh. Nothing what a cup of coffee wouldn't saw. Although I don't have a smartwatch, my Casio is still a basic ABC watch and it says that the air pressure is going down, so decreasing. That sounds like... Well, first of all, it might be that it gets a couple of degrees warmer. But what I suspect it means is that we're getting more snowfall. Rokka is at least eager to move on. Let's see how long that eagerness lasts when he figures out that we're going to climb on top of that thing. I almost forgot to mention, but last night when I stepped outside of the tent, maybe around one o'clock, there were some northern lights. Uh, they were a bit fuzzy and not super bright, but still. So that was a nice bonus. While we are making our way to the mountain, I will share with you a couple of photos that I took those are with my phone and completely unedited, but I think they give you some idea what I saw. Conditions. 
starting to be pretty brutal. Wind direction has changed. Was almost headwind when coming up the steepest part. But I can see the summit now there ahead. I'm sure we can make it. Probably not much of a view from there. <laughs> but we'll see that then. the views. Not much that I can do about those. Need to head down, find some flowing water and have a proper rest. We've been going only hour and a half but it's been a tough one. <laughs> so now let's get down, get some cover and have some food. See you there. I think I have a pretty good idea what we're going to do after lunch. We're going to head back to the same lake we had lunch yesterday, but taking a completely different route. So instead of following this stream back to the place where we camped at, I'm going to go straight to northeast, hard to say in kilometers what that could be, especially with all the up and uphill and downhill. Certainly not, not as much climbing to do anymore as we did in the morning, but a bit, but shouldn't be too bad. I haven't had cell phone signal in in a long time, certainly not today, so I don't know about the weather forecast, but. I can tell you that much that when we are down here, it's definitely not as windy. It's still snowing, but at least not windy. So that's, that makes a huge difference. I just realized that although I haven't had the weather forecast, my own forecast from this morning came through. Remember I said that most likely that the temperatures will rise a bit, but that it will be also snowing. And indeed it is now maybe minus two according to the temperature meter that I have on my rucksack, and it certainly is snowing. Of course, I know some of you, maybe many of you watching, think that it was foolish or outright stupid to go on top of that fell in these conditions. And I agree, I wouldn't recommend it. But to my defense, the weather was a lot better when we started this morning. It turned on us uh, like halfway through the climb, so. Mm. Warm food feels good, man. You 
find kind of cool spots when you don't pull out the most obvious route. No reindeer yet. Plenty of signs, but haven't seen any yet. I'm not sure how I feel about this one. <laughs> I sure hope that someone has just lost their helmet and this isn't a grave site for some unlucky snowmobile or ATV fellow. He has his birthday treat there as well. He's been carrying it for all these days. All these days, always getting a bit of enjoyment out of it every evening. But we are here. Finally found a good spot. Look at that. Also, sorry about the camera quality and if it's a bit shaky or something. GoPro uh, run out of batteries. It doesn't like if it's cold at all. So I need to charge some of those. But there's a little shelter for tonight. I try to air it out a bit because it is a bit windy still. I set up a clothesline because my pants, my boots, and my socks are soaked. So these boots, my thick layer of some type of a wax and the Goretex membrane itself survived and fought like champions all out through rainy Collin National Park and even here a day or so but today the wet snow and just walking through constant wet forests and the boggy areas that was too much but my feet my toes are still warm and that's a good thing uh, the second I feel like they're cold, then boots go off, socks off, and I will switch to those flippers that, that I have with me. Still no signal, so still no idea about the weather forecast, but it is clearing up a bit. So, fingers crossed, we will get some sunshine, maybe tomorrow. But clear skies usually also mean that it's going to be a cold night, so... We'll see. It's, uh, it's far from a certain fire because everything is soaking wet. So we'll have to see if, if I get the bigger stuff burning or not. But while I do have fire and I do have some time, I figured we'll make some berry juice. Let's start off with some Bilberries, of course. Better have those. Then some of these guys. These are great. Although they color everything. Turn everything red. All your camping gear and everything. But they do taste quite nice. And then also these guys. These are not in the best shape anymore. But... That's what the recipe calls. So lingon, lingon berries. Then of course, add local water as much as you want. And to really finish things off, good spoonful of mm, honey. Then just let it come to a slow boil and it should be done. As you can see, the fire has almost died down because I haven't been feeding the smaller sticks and stuff to it constantly. The bigger, bigger sticks don't really catch fire and if they do, they don't really burn that well. So it is what it is, but luckily I don't need this fire to make food. 
it's more of a comfort, I think, comfort thing. And on the topic of building fires, you can't just go around and chop down trees, no matter how dead standing they look. That's not how it, things work in Finland. I know that's common practice, especially across the bushcraft channels on YouTube, not, not Finnish channels, but you know, but in Finland, you pretty much take what is already on the ground and make use of it. That's one of the reasons why I don't carry an axe, but a good saw. I have to say I've been really enjoying this silky gomboy. What's this called? Outback series. Really, this thing just gets the job down super fast compared to an axe. Burns way less calories, makes way less mess and probably also weighs less. Last time I had this, it was with my brother in Muotka Tunturi Wilderness. So I guess, cheers to you, bro. I think I said when I started making that berry juice that I have plenty of time so I can make it. And well, technically I have time, but I don't have a lot of daylight in these parts. This time of the year days are super short, so after I had my drink, I realized that I have maybe hour and a half of daylight left. So I quickly made some dinner and so forth. And Put my socks now here. Actually, I got my pants relatively dry, only a bit wet down here. Put my slippers on, probably not even visible to GoPro anymore, but oh well. So, not going to leave my pants out here because just in case it rains during the night, I have only one pair of pants, but many pairs of socks, of course, with me. Inside of a little shelter. Rokka is having a shower and getting ready to go to bed. I'm charging some GoPro batteries for tomorrow and also everything is ready and set up. So final thing to do is to just wipe and dry my feet with my towel <laughs> and then put thick wool socks on made with merino wool and alpaca wool blend. Mm -mm -mm. Perfection for tonight. Then start relaxing and getting some sleep. Still relatively clear sky, so interesting to see what tomorrow brings again. But that's all for tonight. See you all in the morning. Good morning, folks. As you can see, I think we're getting our first sunny hiking day. It's Thursday and I started this journey on Friday and haven't had sun at all during this time. It did rain a couple of times <coughs> last night, 
And there were some really strong winds at one point. Strong enough for me to wonder if the tent is going to survive it or not. But in the end, all went well. And for some strange reason, the lake isn't even frozen. I don't know how, because yeah, it's minus five degrees. And wasn't it something similar in our previous campsite? I think Rokka is hungry as well. And the lake had been completely frozen, so I don't know what kind of a flash freeze event that was, but quickly. Some local birds checking out my tent. Sorry, buddy, I don't think I have anything for you. Unless you like pork jerky. <laughs> there they are again, checking out the tent. The whole crew. There's another one. Curious little fellows. Drinking this morning coffee got me thinking. It's a bit of a story time here first. A couple of years ago, I got a comment on my video. It was a video about a hiking trip I did in Uro Kekkonen National Park. So again, in Finnish Lapland, with a friend of mine. And during that trip, I happened to carry coffee for both of us. And indeed, it was this same type of coffee, Retki Kahvi, by Lehmus Roastery from Lapperanta, Finland. And uh, yeah, instead of 500 grams, I carried one kilo for two guys for, uh, for the full week. And I got a comment saying that Dave Canterbury has his five C's of survival, but you have now added additional two C's. One kilo of good ass coffee and a considerate wife that lets you go on these adventures. So where I'm going with this is that my original plan was to still today do some hiking, go around this area a bit more and then camp somewhere really close by my car and wake up tomorrow morning before sunrise and start heading home, driving the full day. But what I'm thinking now is that I could maybe surprise my considered wife and the kids and start the journey home already today. I won't make it all the way home today because I have still some hiking to do before I'm at the car. That, that, that is for certain, but if I could start the drive today, then I would be home tomorrow a bit earlier, or actually quite a bit earlier. So I think family at home would be quite pleasantly surprised about that if I show up already tomorrow, maybe afternoon, early afternoon. So that's the plan. Don't tell the wife just yet. But as you can tell, I'm in no rush. I'll get to the car when I get to the car and you guys will have to still stick around with me and Rokka for a little while. This adventure is not over yet. If you have a beautiful day coming up and I certainly want to enjoy it a bit more.
roughly 40% of our hiking here in the wilderness has been through forests just like this, so without any trails. And this is how we've been going. So the dog just walks slowly and, I don't know, kind of defeated looking behind me. Super strange. You know, he's an Alaskan Malamute, a sled dog. So I'm used to him being in front and giving just tiniest bit of tug. But when there are no trails, I think that it's a combination of not being sure where to go and the fact that this terrain is so mushy and maybe the backpack gets caught up on things because there's so much kind of undergrowth that that's the reason why he decides to then stay behind me. Probably if there are fellow Alaskan Malamute owners out there, maybe you could say something about this. No, no. Just a minute. See you Ooh, a tricky spot. Varakka. Up. Oh. He makes it look so easy. Those stones are really slippery. Towards the rising sun. I think I'm going to fire up the Trangia one more time and enjoy my lunch here in these views. I have the moment just for myself without camera on and so forth. And after eight or seven years that I've been doing this, that's my advice to all of you who make YouTube videos or any social media content really. Remember to keep your hobby number one and YouTube second. I see some folks especially when they are starting out, just cranking out videos. And I think that eats away from the enjoyment, from the fulfillment that you have from your hobby. And this is my hobby. Always trying to keep that in mind that this comes first, making videos comes second. As much as I like the community aspect of having a discussion with you in the comments and, and live streams and so forth, but still, First things first. So I think that's enough for this time. You'll be watching Travel Outdoors. This is Rokka, the Alaskan Malamute. My name is Joel. And we both will be seeing you again in the next one.